means it's time to talk about the World of Warcraft Community Council. Ooh. Otherwise known as, I'm going to, you know, put my best foot forward uh, in our big video and have all those lingering doubts and all those stories that I know and, and just squash them a little bit and say, mm. maybe this time. Because this is really the, this is the last chance they have. It really is. Um, so, yes, if you, if you want the difference between them, me and Breach's uh, sort of, um, you know, I mean, he didn't do a video, it was a stream reaction. Um, it's pretty much that. Uh, I've, I've heard pretty much all the same stories. I imagine he has more detail, but um, I've, I've heard from many of the theory crafting people what has went on on the private version of these forums. Yeah. And, uh I'm just thinking about Magdalena's uh, thread and the the second screenshot yes. recently that was, I mean, <laughs> oh dear, no. Um, let's just say that that screenshot was a prime example of, oh, discords, discords exist. Why bother with the classes and the talents? Wah! Yeah. That's maybe okay. Maybe <laughs> maybe not. Qu imagine uh, imagine that emotion, but ran through a filter of r slash I am very smart. Oh, that's that's cutting. That's cutting. I mean, it's exactly what it was, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Th oh, man. This, <laughs> this. Like, I just want. I just want to say back to that. Have you ever heard of Riot Games and Valve, League yeah. of Legends and Dota, and how mm. those developers successfully balance all of their things, even with discords. <laughs> existing yeah absolutely um but i guess to stop being a cock to um anonymous dev who got ridiculed by a bunch of the theory crafters for posting on the uh, private forum uh, the community council is uh, instead going to be public which is going to unlock incredible features such as transparency such mm -hmm. as um people with the wrong opinions getting hunted down and flamed in the internet and uh, other you know extremely bright happy things Perfect. <laughs> so I understand this being public because what they're going yeah. to want is the dive communications to be something that can be picked up on. And also a bit of that's probably going to be like, right, guys, uh, you know, right, team, we have to uh, communicate in a reasonable manner. This is going publicly. So, uh, you know, <laughs> don't have your preconceived notions accidentally slip out onto the keyboard. <laughs> team uh yeah. so you know it it forces a different mode of communication uh, it has some transparency and all of that but of course then the issues are um witch hunting and you know what's going to happen when somebody comes in and is like no the covenant lock was actually great for my fantasy um which you know we're all gonna laugh and say ha, that's a bit of a silly opinion but you know at least there's a there's an atom of truth or you know something behind uh, that opinion you know where there's there is the argument to be made um, and uh, then it's, it's the sort of thing, you know, you, you don't want a, a situation where it's always groupthink and always consensus um, because then, you know, people who have high conviction but not the most popular beliefs, they'll get crowded out, and uh, that can be quite a bad thing, and with the mechanics of the internet, that can lead to, um, you know, people getting witch-hunted and bad shit going on and, and, and things like that. So with the community council, it's like there's all of the skepticism being channeled by, like, say, Preach, which um, I see some people say, oh, all Preach does is farm negativity. <laughs> I know, Mike, he's not. That's, not. Hmm. That's seriously not it. Uh, there is a reason why that man is so much happier seeming right now. Hmm. And it's because actually he is the complete opposite of thriving in negativity. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's that fun <laughs> thing where I feel they really need to, like having this actually have everything aired out might be helpful more than anything else because mm. clearly their private attempts have failed miserably in the past. I think that's what's that's there where now it's a case of if this is public and people can see what, what feedback's actually going through in the place where they're supposed to see it, then they have no excuses anymore. Whereas private feedback, no one knows that's went down except for the private feedback people who can't yeah. say it. So they, you know, it's just under the, under the carpet, jobs are good. And as it currently stands with all the public feedback that people give over betas and over patches and stuff, that's not officially feedback. So they can go, ah, oh, that's just, you know, that's just someone in the ether shouting something. How are we supposed to yeah. see that? But I mean, now that those excuses, <laughs> both of those excuses are gone where it's like, no, we can point to literally where in the forum you're supposed to read and you've promised to read, you've not fucking read. So there's that kind of element of, they're kind of putting their, I don't want to say they're hard on their sleeve, but they are, they are exposing their neck. They are, yeah. I guess if, if you want to 
piss blood at something. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I've heard this story from from numerous people. Now, obviously, it you know there there is it, it could be false or whatever, but I have heard it from a few people, um, and it, it was basically the defense of shards of domination. Mm. And the posts on a, I believe, an internal, sorry, or not an internal, sorry, a private feedback forum on the domination charts. Now, if that was to happen in public, <laughs> we would have a bit of an interesting situation. Yes. We would have the community basically say, your internal reasoning for this, which basically is that they're the same as tier sets, why are people, you know, why would people be unhappy about this, mm. um, is, is awful logic. And we know it hasn't worked out well. Um, so you'd have that thing where, you know, the community would be able to give far more targeted and specific feedback on the issue, but also on an individual. Yeah. And that could certainly lead to funky business that's not exactly what we want to have going on. Mm. So there is, yeah, there, there is just that little, there's pros and cons to it being pri uh, public, I, I suppose. Yeah. Um, it's interesting to think them over and we'll just need to wait and see for implementation of this to see how it actually uh, actually goes. Um hmm. For other things, there is the the announcement video. Oh yes. Um, look, I don't want to be I don't want to be mean here. Uh, now, this the, the the extreme levels of cringe in this video are really not the fault of any individual um, on this video. Part of it's the editing. You see, if you try to get people to speak a sentence naturally, and then you just go and get these two words from from him, these two from her, these three, and then you stitch it together everyone is going to sound like a weird stilted robot who is terrified. Mm -hmm. So that's not a way to edit this video that's actually going to make your staff shine. So like, you know, number one. And on these things, I can say, um, you know, we, we have more experience than, than them on yeah. doing YouTube videos. I mean, certainly things like this. Um, so this isn't a thing for being cruel to them or laughing at them or, you know, Oh, punching down on, on Blizzard or anything. Um, but it is something where if they want to be taken seriously, they, they need to start putting out uh, video content here that uh, does feel professional. I think that is really important. Um, so just things here like, why is a crew not going to Morgan's house? Uh, you know, dropping... COVID restrictions. They can work <laughs> around that. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying that you got to go and get one of these cameras we use, like a Blackmagic friggin' 4K, but, yeah. uh, you know, at least there's multiple people at Blizzard who stream and they know how to stream with a DSLR into a yeah. cam link. At bare minimum, this should be done for all of the staff. Um, yeah, if you're sure. going to have something like this, um, if possible, try to have a recording room in the Blizzard office. Take people in for a limited, specific amount of time so that it's okay with state regulations or whatever, because I, I have no idea what's going on in Cali. Um, but assuming it is, you know, work from home stuff. Um, get them good microphones, right? Like, let's not have our game director talking into, again, no offense, but that's that's a grand setup if you're raiding and you're just yeah. doing VoIP with, uh, you know, with, with your, your people. Um, but that's, you know, just some random headset. That's not the deal. When, when people think of, you know, oh, this is a, a video from the World of Warcraft team, we should see good video, we should see good audio, and it shouldn't be edited in a way that um, opens the people up, the, you know, the hosts of the video, um, well, just to, you know, not really have their best foot forward. Because everyone here feels more awkward and stilted uh, than they are, and a few of these are people I've talked to. And I know they are not awkward and stilted. It's just the way the video is put together. Um, you know, it's not putting the, their best foot forward. So just from the point of being video producers, I would say, like, good idea. I get the concept and all of those things, but really that is not the level of production uh, we, we should be seeing from a big, I mean, from a big company. And, and frankly, um, you know, e even if you're thinking of, like, doing YouTube yourself, like, you know, you'd never put something like that out. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think that's just important because, you know, community perception is, is a really important thing. And it's a bit like the concept of, you know, like say price anchoring, yeah. right? Where, you know, you, you try to root. It's, it's weird. You get into no negotiation tactics and you'll start to come off like a bunch of psychopaths. <laughs> um, but I don't know, what would you call it? Quality anchoring, expectations anchoring. But, you know, if you put your, you want to put your best foot forward. And if the foot that you've put forward looks like extremely amateur and feels really awkward to watch and is just kind of embarrassing and stilted, because mm. it, like, here's another really important thing, and this is something companies don't get. 
talking in fr- like talking uh, either into a teleprompter or in this case reading it like, because this seems like a script. Yeah, that is a skill, and don't you know try if possible like get away from people to have like lots of reps in off cam before they actually start you know start doing that stuff. Yeah, um, I- you know this would have been like this would have been better if you just chose any one of these people. Uh, or maybe you did a longer video than this and, you know, ha- gave each one of them a segment where they could just speak naturally in their natural voice. Um, so that's just a, like a little bit of feedback that I would give them because I want things like this to be a success. But a part of that has got to be, well, you know, the, the, the bits working and doing their job. And certainly when you look at this video, I know that, you know, not these dislikes are primarily not from people who are saying, oh, this production quality isn't great. Yeah. But... You know, if we launched a video one day and it had sort of vastly below what one would expect production quality, people would be like, well, what the hell, dude? That's not. Um, and, you know, they'd, they'd actually take the content of our messaging less seriously as well. Yeah, because it would be a, you know, a, a difference in the quality uh, received versus the quality expected. Yeah. Um, so, like, I'm not trying to be pedantic, but I think these things are important. And we have been in a work from home situation for long enough that really, like, Come on, Blizzard, why are you not getting, and you work with corporate partners all the time, so, you, I mean, you could probably get it for free, but, like, why aren't you sending a default video kit uh, to these people? And, you know, even if it means you've got to have some engineer who just has to have their daily PCR test as they go around <laughs> all of these people's houses to get them set up, but, you know, it doesn't take uh, a pro, like a, a video production pro, uh, much time whatsoever to, to set this stuff up well. And just when it's going out to so many people, it is important. Yep, absolutely. And I, I can actually, now, now that last week has passed or this week has passed, I can now say definitely the amount of time it takes to be able to speak into a teleprompter is insane. You really, you really, really, you wouldn't expect how difficult it is to actually be vaguely natural reading script. Like, I, I hope the amount of takes that I had to do before that video went live this week never see the light of day because they were fucking atrocious. They were atrocious. I'm still not even happy with the end product, but the... God, they were fucking bad. Like, it, yeah. They were bad. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. It's hard. Um, you know, even actors struggle mm. with the teleprompter. Yeah. Like, because, you know, what actors are going to be a bit more used to is working on stage uh, or, you know, working on camera or something, but where, you know, they've, they've learned their lines. Um, but if you throw somebody who's an actor into a teleprompter situation, like, if they don't have teleprompter skills, um, it's, it's going to be pretty rough. Um, and I think especially... Like another thing too, whenever I'm in a production environment, people are talking about interviews. There are loads of like tips and tactics to get a good interview out of someone who is not, you know, by default, someone who's like mega used to being on a camera. Hmm. Um, and there's just a bunch of that stuff that's not really uh, being employed either. So yeah, there's, there's stuff going on there. Blizzard should definitely try to level up in this regard. I think as time goes on, there is going to be a larger and larger need for community Uh, outreach programs like this also videos from the team things like that Mm -hmm. and uh, they just need to get them up to snuff and if they do the hard work now and they put in the investment now it will i I can guarantee you it will pay off yeah i mean there's there is the angle that people are talking about in chat that it's obviously a a marketing choice to be hey it's just us we're in our own home we've got our headsets we're just kind of you know talking away as if we're we're just normal we're just people like you (laughs) Well, yeah, I mean, if, if their normal is that stilted and weird, then, man. Which I know it isn't, because I've mm. seen most of these people talk, and it, it just, it does, they don't come off like that at all. Yeah, it's it's that weird thing where I think I think they they would have been in the right spirits, but they kind of almost were too, too stilted on an idea level, not just on camera, but the idea of, like, if you're going to do a live chat, do a live chat. Like... They could have watched, I mean, obviously you go on about it a lot, but the Star Citizen stuff, or yeah. whatever it was we were watching last week, was it? Some, the, some Citizen Con stuff. Yeah, some Citizen Con stuff, and it was, like, it was really good, to the point where I don't give a shit about Star Citizen, and I ended up just standing behind you while you were watching, I was like, fuck, yeah, yeah. I just watched this for half an hour, shit, how'd that like, happen? And that's their big event, but they do, like, weekly, or yeah. every two weeks, or whatever, inside Star Citizen videos that are all, like, really, really, really good, and you might say, well, yeah, Michael, but Star Citizen, so they're running an active, you know crowdfunding campaigns so mm. they get very direct roi from these things well yeah blizzard are running a subscription mmo <laughs> yep so you want overall engagement in world of warcraft and that's going to mean playing the game 
we already know for them it means reading the books and doing all those outside of the game things. Hmm. And that could also mean uh, following the esports, which is on the World of Warcraft channel, and also following what the developers are doing and you know the, the game being developed. So there's, uh, there's plenty to do there. Um, to, to go through some other things on this, then, yep, there's the public forum. I'll ask members to share their experiences and perspectives on anything in the game. Uh, now, of course, um, people are already sharing their experiences and perspectives on anything in the game um, now, actually. Uh, mm. We do it quite regularly on, on YouTube. Uh, Kalani does, Soul does, Tally does, um, Preach did. <laughs> right? You know, there's so many people doing this for free already. And then if you go to the forums, there's <laughs> yep. loads of people in the forums who, who do this. Um, yeah. <laughs> and I even saw, you know, PvP. There's been a lot of feedback on the PvP gearing system in patch 9.1.5. They're still not happy. Their core things have not been addressed. If you actually go to the forum, um, there's like a thing in the WoW forums where if something, like if a thread has got enough like views and, and replies, like it, it's not like a, it's like a hot thread or whatever, but like it gets a little highlight. So it's even highlighted and all of that. And that's got to mean it's been seen. Um, and, you know, nothing they've said has seemingly made it in. And it's and in the PvP yep. community, there is like, a, I mean, it's not the thing I was the most aware of until I looked out for it because I'm not really in that community. Um, but it was stuff they really, I mean, they seemed to have some very good arguments. Um, it all seemed very reasonable. And uh, they just felt like they'd completely been ignored. Um, and that the, you know, the things Blizzard had done really were like kind of off base a bit. Um, and it's like, okay, so this is going to be this new forum, but what was stopping a dev from hopping onto that forum post on the current forums and doing a reply? You know, what was stopping them from, from doing that? And those are some of the questions, uh, that I ask myself, which your priest uh, asks himself, um, I think the reason for the way that we took it in the in the video we, we went to publish is that we're all we're we're both very at this stage like pretty skeptical um, because the the WoW team have proven themselves to be arrogant and stubborn and it, I know there's a few people in the WoW team who don't like us because they have me blocked on Twitter um, <laughs> but I'm going to say again your boss literally said you were stubborn in the interview he gave to VentureBeat. He said the team basically institutionally was stubborn. So that's not me throwing some, you know, crazy criticism at you. That's something your director is admitted to. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's like at what stage, you know, <laughs> look at Shadowlands. Every single idea you had failed. Like pretty much. Every every system's failed. Yep. Look at Battle for Azeroth. Most of them failed. <laughs> you look at Legion, like they powered through it, but... with. A, it's like, how can you be so stubborn and arrogant? And then I guess you, you know, you see some of the things like the leaked screenshot from Magdalena's Twitter of, yeah. you know, basically blaming the the discords and all those communities. It's like, yeah, sure. That definitely does put some more scru scrutiny on what you're doing. And that does mean that there is a um, an apparatus at play to immediately tunnel to the right thing. Um, but there was quite a lot more blame because you've seen the screenshot. I showed it to you. Yeah, I have. There was quite a bit more blame uh kind of implicit like the connotation of it was yeah you know pretty rough and it's like man is that really the perspective the perception going on there um so you know it, it's just that thing the, the the past of the game does make it all seem weird but then you got people like josh augustine who are you know um who are very public about wanting to work with the community who you know every every time josh pokes his head above the parapet mm. he gets like a pin cushion <laughs> arrows, arrows, yeah. bullets, fireballs, everything. And I see it, you know, I, because I think he's got a really good message and a positive message. So I'll, I'll retweet him and, and like mm. his thing. And, you know, many of the comments that he'll get, because, you know, then that means I'm looped into the, the things. Yep. And many of them are very positive. And there's also loads that are like, yeah, lol, but you guys don't listen. Uh, and yeah. I think, you know, in one of the, he even replied to one of those, be like, I really am trying. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's for the, for the good of those people that, you know, I, I want this to, to be successful. And then I suppose there's the, the stories I cannot share of, of mm. things that, uh, you know, that I've heard as well that would make me hope that perhaps some of that cadre of, uh, of the team are not involved in this because they don't seem to be. TLDR, <laughs> man-child. Actually, yeah. you'd be surprised how many problems boil down to the simple thing of 
man child. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And obviously that's like, that kind of thing doesn't come to any solution because that's sort of, you know, the problem is with the person. So if you try to think of like what, what actually, what direction we could move to solve that is almost nothing that the user or a player or anyone can do. It's up to them to make the internal change and change how their attitude is towards all this stuff. And the kind of the, the, the sort of vague guidance I would give on that front is everything I read from on, on that perspective from uh, specific people comes across as very defensive. Mm. Like you're saying about the screenshot of the, it basically boiled down to this is not like we, we can't do anything about this because there are all these roadblocks that are external and it's externalizing problems in a way. And it comes down to that is while it is an excuse and it's technically a reason that is the idea of, well, this is what we think is going to happen. So let's not try as opposed to, well, have you considered trying? Have you considered doing something to, you know, bat those external factors away yeah. and keep them off? See, I feel like they might say we do, but then we can all turn around and be like, okay, well, why are most of the legendary effects like in, not viable? Why are most of them useless? You know, why yeah. have you filled the game full of like passive damage modifiers that are really boring that nobody cares about? You know, yeah. why are why are you so slow to pick up on things? Yeah. It's like, you know, then people would so I, I wonder what it just what the state of things is, is like that agility can't be something. Or maybe they are like really paralyzed uh, of, you mm -hmm. know, they, they actually know what the changes to make are, but they know as well that loads of people have crafted those legendaries and Loads of people have, you know, done whatever, and if you just change the whole way of things in a in a hot fix in the middle of a tier, then you'll have a lot of anger, including maybe from the people who bought those legendaries with gold from WoW Token. Yeah, well, there's a... Which makes it hard. Yeah, there's a very, very, very interesting book that I was reading that this a lot of that idea comes from, and it, the, the actual literally phrase of the title of the book will make sense for how they would combat that, and it is the book called The Courage to Be Disliked. Mm. And it is the idea of just, they need to actually have the courage to make the changes that will be for the better bit of the entire game. But I guess it's, it's, it's just that, can they, can they muster the courage to make those changes that actually will improve the game? And do they want to improve the game in the way we want it improved? And also- Well, courage they, or not, I think <laughs> they are a bit disliked now. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, are they capable of making the changes as well? That's the big thing, where I just, I don't know if I have a lot of faith in certain aspects of the team for going forward, but we'll have to we'll have to see what yeah. the philosophical change ultimately brings down to, what it ultimately boils down to in terms of what, you know, if they're going to go for an older philosophy, a better one, even though Ian threw the old guard under the bus in that interview. We'll talk about that later. Um, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Fuck me sideways. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm... I've got media training to do on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, I think as you know, we're like we're we've got stuff coming up with the game soon, and just as a part of the process, as a developer, you do get sent through media training. So mm -hmm. you know, if 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 I if I come out on Wednesday as just a complete useless fucking husk, <laughs> you'll you'll know. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that that felt that it, okay. I don't know. It it just felt very strange to me, and I, I talked about it in the video in a way that was mm -hmm. trying to be like. If this is what I initially thought it was, this is really bad. But, you know, he could have meant this and um, it could just be bad phrasing and let's just hope that it's the good thing. But, yep. man, I, I think buck passing is something that... Ass covering and buck passing is um, not well liked. Yeah, uh, I I think everyone, everyone can tell it at the, you know, from a mile away. They go, no, hang on a second. This is your problem. Did, did you just hmm. blame this on people who are no longer at the company? Mm. Potentially because they um, did a lot of bad things <laughs> in a few people's yeah. cases. Yeah, that. <clears throat> I think that's the thing that kind of... that's It's that statement, it's that idea that keeps, keeps all the skepticism of this alive. Whereas it's just, if there was ever an honest phrase out of anyone at the company that didn't come across as a media trained interview or a community council video that's very clearly very corporate trying to be casual and everyone can smell that it's a thing where no matter how hard you try to be casual if you're a corporation if you aren't actually acting like a casual kind of uh you know conversation 
or if you're not actively in, you know, in basically the minds with the players, you're not going to know. You're not going to know how to behave. It's the same. It's the same thing. I always really, really enjoy about certain places on the internet, where as soon as as soon as anyone who's an imposter turns up, like the average person will never tell that imposter. Mm. But you will just see the entire wave, this big anonymous wave of people just turn around and go, you're the odd one out. And you're like, how the fuck did they get that? But it's just the deep cultural stuff. Yeah, just like a Redditor in 4chan. Exactly. Like, in- instantly yeah. sniffed out. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> it. That's exactly it. Is that if you're a Redditor on 4chan, they know. They know. They can smell you. You know, yeah, what, what, what some, that says about Redditors, I don't know. internet sniffing powers. Yeah, so I think it's the same thing here where until they actually start to embody those values that they say they will or embody the values players kind of want then they're just going to be looked at like no no you're 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 almost like a strange online and video game variant of the uncanny valley mm. oh, where, that's pretty good yeah that's the thing if you oh, <laughs> that's the creepiest thing of all if you think about the uncanny valley as an evolutionary response it means at one point in human history, we all, as a as a species, or like the you know the precursor to the, basically every human alive, had reason to be very terrified of anything that looked like it but wasn't. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a fun one to mull over in your head. But you can do that online. You can do that with you know thoughts and philosophical differences very easily. Yeah. Um, for getting on to the council, there's a you know it was very funny because I actually did fill this out. I wasn't mm-hmm. going to initially. Yeah. Um, and we, okay, I'm just going to say this. I rate my chances of being in this at like fucking 0.1%. Um, I mean, pretty simple. Bunch of the devs, including people who I think might be on that, do have me blocked on Twitter. So, yep. I mean, <laughs> there's a decent chance. Just going to say that means I'm nowhere fucking near any of this shit. Mm. Uh, no, I, I can confirm to you that there are, uh, like, there are developers um who uh you know who did watch the videos uh, that, that we put out um, now who knows some of them may no longer be at the company mm. um, i don't mean in that way by the way not for the recent things yeah um so you know our i know that our things would end up making it into the vaunted halls of Blizzard entertainment mm. um but uh yeah no look if i was sort of in and around here I would be interested in, in hopping onto this forums and you know, giving it the old sort of college try. It would be it would be very fun. Um, yeah, you know, um, I linked the channel, I linked WoW Tales. Um, I forgot what the other thing I, I linked was, um, but yeah, so I, I did it. I was initially not going to because I didn't really think I'd have the time, but uh, a lot of people on, on Twitter and a few other places said they wanted me to, and I thought, oh well. I'll I'll throw it I throw my hat in the ring and see what happens and if I do get it I'll carve out the time. Um, so we'll we'll see we'll see. Um, now in fairness here I will say it was one or two times I was having uh, conversations quick little ones with Lore mm-hmm. and uh, you know Lore was like super receptive to stuff for player feedback you know and like uh, we were talking about you know dev interviews and things like that and you know I think he took it initially as public interviews and I'm like oh no 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 like dude. I, I, like, I don't want content from this. I don't yeah. give a shit about making videos. Um, you know, like, knowing that, say, you know, Preach as well, like, he doesn't give a shit about getting a video out of an interview. He actually just, I'm the same, just want to have a little bit of time to be like, hello there, hello there, our opinion is, here's a few little issues that are going to cause you problems, so let's fix them now, early. Um, so, you know, who, who knows? Because he was actually very pro that idea and, um, you know, pro all of those... Uh, things and you know generally I, I think I think he's trying his best he just you know <laughs> I think there might just be budget cuts in the community department yeah, given that uh, you know all the people went and seemingly took a while for them to be replaced mm. oh dear that firing eh that firing so um, look I threw my hat in the ring um, I'd encourage you to throw yours in the ring as well if you feel like you've got uh, some stuff to contribute and especially if you've got varied play styles too um because i think what's actually really important is they thought that casual i think it's a bit insulting what they thought about casual players honestly they thought that casual players needed um the casual players like needed to not be able to go to another covenant for an ability in order for them to think it's a meaningful choice they completely misunderstood like why even a dialogue option in ff14 can cause you tremendous heartache 
<laughs> even though it means fucking nothing to the game. Yeah, It's because it's how you define your fantasy and you define your character. Uh, so I feel like the, quite a lot of the decision makers in that team, like a fair few of them actually do come from the same guild, um, Elitist Sharks. And you might actually know Elitist Sharks. I used to browse the Elitist Shark forums uh, back in the day, um, you know, trying to see what was up with being better at the game. Um, but a bunch of them, you know, Ian and, and a few others are, are from the, from that guild, EJ. And, uh, and that's probably more to say that they probably do themselves represent more of a, a you know, a mythic player. Yeah. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe we just need a way where like casual players can come in and be like, oh, you know, maybe that was an assumption you guys had about us. And actually, basically what I think would end up happening is you'd find out that casual players and super hardcore players don't really have competing interests. Because I don't think the casual players want to do a mythic raid. And the mythic raiders don't want to be forced to do things they don't want to do either. Man. So actually, a happy game, I think what the casual people and the mythic people want, they shouldn't be stepping on each other's toes. But it just feels like the game is all very tightly lashed together, such that everything steps in everyone's toes and everyone's angry at each other. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I'm trying to think of a decent analogy for it, but it's... And I don't want to go straight and talk about uh, Yoshida Uncensored, which I've been reading for maybe a video, but uh, he talks about FF14 being a theme park in terms of how they design it. And the idea is, well, not everyone's going to go on a roller coaster, so you have to have other things in your attraction. Yeah. You have to have a whole wide array of things to do in your theme park, otherwise people will not do you know, no, Matt. People wouldn't like it all. No, Matt. Install three roller coasters <laughs> and uh, make the queue experience as convoluted as possible. <laughs> <laughs> that as funny as it sounds that is actually the experience of world of warcraft yeah that, that's what it is you want on this roller coaster yeah we'll jump some fucking hoops for us first i oh man that's brutal yeah that's 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 is actually a really that is really redefined how that game is in my head for me <laughs> just that thought jesus christ yeah exactly you know um man oh popeye mm. what a good ride what a good ride <laughs> universal orlando Hmm. So there you go. Um, that's the community council. Look, I'm going to say we will take any wins we can get from this. We will have to, uh, you know, see this as them genuinely wanting to do things different. And that means two things. It means if they slip back in, then they're going against their word. And we have a reason to be like, hello, are you going against your word? Hmm. Um, the other side of that is, oh, we all march forward together into the happy sunset. Yeah. And it all gets better. Yeah. There is one unfortunate thing about their naming decision, though. Uh-oh. It is council. So, well, first of all, the Horde Council. And I don't think people are generally happy with that idea very much. I'm not too sure. But mostly it brings a specific quote to mind. Because, you know, you throw on the Endwalker trailer and you just go, Blizzard would keep its council while the world is lost to ruin. <laughs> like, there you go. Yep, there you go. Well, you know, That's Blizzard it. would keep its council while the world of Warcraft is lost to ruin. It just... 100 copers it's that thing where you just if you just do things like that you lose basically you lose the meme war mm. i haven't seen anyone actually you know uh, comment on that yet but it is the case of you you those little things just you lose the meme war people don't care about you anymore that's just the natural progression i think that just means that whoever uh, is currently running the world of warcraft twitter account uh, just needs to have their roles and responsibilities like massively expanded <laughs> yeah basically yeah uh I'm just thinking, how much work would it be if every single Twitter reply we did had to be rendered into a 15-second video? <laughs> oh, God, that'd be some, that'd be some work, yep. I'd say. 